I would like to talk about um, saving the world. And the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, the kind of narrative around saving the world that it would be um, arrogant or ridiculous to talk about saving the world. Wanting to save the world is something ridiculous. Like, who are you? And what I would like to point out is how horrific and ridiculous and arrogant and ignorant it is if we keep not saving the world. Who do we think are we? not saving this world. Um, coming not from pity for suffering species or suffering humans, not coming from a helper sim syndrome, just coming from the scientific clarity that within very few years my current information is seven to nine years until climate change has hit an irreversible point, a point of no return, where after that we can do whatever we want, we could then do everything right in terms of carbon dioxide, etc. And still we won't be able to reverse the vicious circle of global warming. So coming from that scientific clarity, just everybody who chooses or who thinks he or she isn't ridiculous, doesn't want to be ridiculous, has to respond to that. And um, so maybe as a compromise, we would rather have to redefine what it is saving the world and what it isn't instead of choosing to not save the world because we do not want to be ridiculous or because we want to belong to those ones who are pseudo-sovereign and pseudo-mature. Eventually all of those masks and roles are just hiding that we are cowards, that we have no idea and that we hope that we won't be the ones who are called out by the others. That's a very short visioned, immature, childish game. So maybe as a compromise, let's find another term. Because definitely what is, what's very clear for me is, we won't be the ones saving the world but we can be the ones who do not add, do not keep adding layer by layer to the problem. And if we stop doing that, we hack the code anyway. If we stop adding layers of suffering to the suffering around, if we stop that, if we manage to stop adding layers of suffering, it will automatically lead to us reducing suffering because we are then recovering from our own suffering inside. So it's rather let's reverse what we have added in an unnecessary way to existence. If we figure out how to reverse that, the system will regulate itself. It's us stepping out of the way because we have been obviously the ones who stepped into the way in a way that this planet cannot digest in a healthy way or not digest in a, uh, not digest in a way that allows us to have the best circumstances for existing. So it's rather us stepping out of the way in terms of global self-regulation. It's rather us providing 
the setting or providing. Recreating, re-allowing the setting that will lead in a self-healing collective dy dynamics to global regulation. And if we regulate one thing, all things will regulate because it's not about different topics that we are suffering from. It's about different symptoms from the same topic. So it's the same with individual therapy. If you really figure, figure out how to treat yourself well in one aspect of your life, it's a matter of time until those other aspects of your life will learn that as well, just because you are way too intelligent in terms of aliveness in order to have one aspect of your life, one area of your life that's truly free and the other ones are truly unfree. That's just, there is just, there are just two poles, suffering of freedom. And suffering, I was introduced to suffering <laughs> as a child, um, it, like, like life is suffering uh, coming from Buddhist quotes. And I was like, no, life is not about suffering. I think Buddha has been wrong. Now I know what he means. However, um, when I zoom into the term of suffering, what I see is trauma. And what I see in specific is collapse due to trauma. So collapse means disembodiment, dissociation, numbness due to trauma. Uh, what we know from trauma therapy or trauma trauma science, trauma research is that everything that you numbed out around, that you shut down, where you disembodied, where you disassociated because of situation X or um, certain circumstances is something that underneath the numbness, the fatigue, the emptiness, hides more energy than everything where you are just frozen, where you are stuck where you are like in a permanent mode of alarm, it has a lot of your energy, but it doesn't have that much energy that you have where you do not sense yourself anymore. So where we do not see anything, where we are empty instead of too full, where we are collapsed instead of frozen, this is where most of our energy is hidden. So now let's, so, or to some extent, or like boiling that down, um, human mankind is in the situation that it is in right now because of collective trauma, because of collective trauma and in specific collective collapse. Collective collapse or collapse in general is suffering. So it's like suffering is the shadow of emptiness that isn't truly empty. Yeah. If we step into sensing our suffering instead of denying it, numbing ourselves out, playing the ridiculous game of a privileged culture, being educated and mature and adult, if we stop numbing out around our suffering, our suffering will make visible for our eyes and sensible for our senses that there is something instead of nothing. It's not empty, it's too full. So it's re-embodying ourselves into ourselves. And that leads to an instinctive clarity between true silence, true emptiness, true letting go and something that's just a collapse in order to cover the hell underneath. So it's basically us agreeing to um, layers of hell and death and trauma in ourselves. It's us agreeing to in us are present those energies that we want the least and they are the most present. 
So I can, I can boil, I do boil all of those um, symptoms of global mess down to um, collective or global trauma or collapse. To me, there are just different symptoms. And to me, there is, it's, it's zero question. Why can people do these things, these horrific things to each other? I'm quite the opposite, wondering why are we still able to want each other, to care at least a little bit for our environment compared to what happened to this culture, uh, this inherited layers of thousand la thousands of layers of trauma. Um, I think it's quite amazing that we are still wanting to show up for existence. It's like, wow, the love inside must be a pretty resilient thing. Otherwise, it would just have been crushed in one of those wars, in one of those cases of rape. Would have been easy if love would be weak, it would have gone already. So still it's present in us and still motivates us at least to ask at least sometimes the right questions. How can we save the world in terms of becoming that unimportant in our confused terms and clear terms that the system can regulate itself without further disturbance through us? Why are we not saving, like, why are we not in this position where mankind shows up in terms of going out of the way already? Our cultural narrative is because we are greedy and egoistic and only think about ourselves. And I really, this is such a stupid thing. That's just so obviously wrong. We have to be egoistic. We have to learn how to be greedy. That is when we will start taking action for having a good life. And that is when we will start taking action for a planet. That will be a beautiful place for more than the next upcoming seven to nine years. Come on. We are not egoistic, we are hating ourselves. We do not want a good life. We are running from a good life more than from anything else. We are begging for suffering. All those narratives around the Wall Street guys who are just thinking about their own existence, it's just so wrong. Nobody who is egoistic in instinctive, in powerful terms could not think about what, about where he or she lives, why she or he exists. So what we call egoism is the opposite. It's self-hatred. What we call greed is begging for the allowance to stay in the collapse until we are dead. If we recover from collapse, many concepts and scenes and disciplines and um, methods in our world will recover automatically as well. For example, love will recover because at the moment what we talk about, what, what we see or what we assume to be present when we talk about love is most of all collapse instead of love. Mm. For example, saving the world, it will be embedded in inner richness instead of burnout. At the moment, so many activists are working day and night and they are so burnt out and feel so alone for good reasons because most around them, most people around them do not show up with their hands and with their 
physical uh, power for helping refugees, etc. And all those scenes will help each other and will recover from the isolation or the kind of one dimension dimensionality that at the moment present in those topics. Like activism will be embedded in inner gain in an inner gain of energy instead of loss of inner energy so i won't exhaust myself in order to help you i will enrich myself when i help you um, and how to do that that's a topic for another video but i'm basically doing this video because i think that i know how to how to take another step or big leap in terms of activism and love and all of that, etc. Uh, coming to another scene, the spiritual scene at the moment. Like, I mean, the spiritual scene. I'm working in the spiritual scene. I have been working in that for the last decade at least. And it's such a uh, intelligent and wise scene in terms of, let's say, what we know or what we what we see or what we what we quote all day long we are all one or whatever all of that is true why are so many people so interested in spirituality and still so irrelevant on the global and political level because our term of spirituality is poisoned with the hidden shadow of collapse That is why spirituality is so weak, because it's so nice for us to feel love and light and peace and harmony that we oversee or overlook, I don't know the right term at the moment, that we deny that we just want to cuddle. If collapse gets released out of the field of spirituality or love or activism and even on politics all of those scenes will live, live up to a way bigger power and a way bigger efficiency when it comes to getting stuff done because at the moment what we are doing at the moment is it's looping instead of truly taking action for this global regulation dynamics. And I think that I know, I, I see a path how the global regulation can be, um, can be allowed. And so I'm not talking about this in order to blame others, or, or say why it doesn't work. I talk about this because I want to talk about how I think it can work. And um, yeah, I, I think I will need a few videos in order to give a rough sketch around that, but um, that's my motive for here. Thanks for watching. Okay, um, let me say how I think it doesn't work or it won't work to save the world. I'm not saying it won't work if we keep doing it that way, but I am saying that it won't work because we are doing it that way. It might work even though, however, I think it's unlikely and everything that makes the process over the course of the next years easier um, is something that might be of use for many of us. Um, first of all, it won't work by us convincing the critical mass of people. It won't work by us being heard by enough people in order to make the shift. It won't work by the number of people who follow the right thing instead of keeping investing into the wrong things. It won't work in any kind of, de of attachment to uh, outer followership um, followers. 
and um, and people who agree with you or who are convinced. Quite the opposite. It will work in terms of moving the critical mass of energy instead of the critical mass of numbers of people. And that is a huge difference because at the moment we try to be heard by others and we try to be taken serious. And again, what we call being serious is a trauma symptom of collapse. It's not possible to convince somebody rationally of something that would save his or her life if he or she is stuck in the opposite due to inner collapse. That's uh, like, it's, it's a trauma symptom. It's a thing that's, happen, that's happening in the reptilian brain of the human mammal. It doesn't happen in the neocortex and the neocortex is way too unimportant in order to be asked in this moment what do we do with this situation so at the moment we are running in terms of climate into a global collapse um, and we are running in terms of uh, not, not we are running into that we are running into awareness for the amount of inner collapse in ourselves so um, that is where we have to take action and that is already present in the in the in this um yeah again spiritual scene wisdom of everybody has to change himself and then the whole world will change that's true the problem is it doesn't lead to meaningful action it leads to thousands and millions of people who run into their private life in order to fix their childhood and repair their character and uh, training non-violent communication around around small stuff and all of that is gold and all of that is the right thing however it leads to you mm, or me being super focused on the private life instead of annihilating the difference between privacy and politics, between global and individual horizons. So it leads to more separation, it leads to more privilege, it leads to more work-life balance instead of saying this is about life 24-7. And, and that is what I come down to again and again and again. We are, we are begging for suffering in terms of we are trying with all of our carbon dioxide, whatever emission stuff. Uh, we, we are begging for, for, for a bigger prison or for uh, a more, a, a prettier prison instead of for freedom. We are not asking for enough. This is not about getting along at least a little bit better. This is about cracking the code of suffering on the whole level. So when we talk about saving the world, what's very often in the background is if we are not saving the world, we will be punished by our children will suffer from a climate that is like not optimal, optimal for anybody and species are extincted and then we are extincted, etc. And that is a little bit like we are even running from this future, not because then we will be extincted because that's too abstract and we are not really getting what we are saying there because we are suppressing our own death but we are running from being the guilty ones in the last moments of our lives so at the moment we are we are like our we are like children or, or people in puberty feeling guilty like oh i did something wrong yes mm -hmm. and then we try to be our own parents at the same time and say oh you mustn't do that otherwise you're guilty and wrong and bad and we don't want to be guilty and wrong and bad, but that this is about our death completely independently from us being guilty or not, for, from us being bad or not. That's something that we don't touch. So it's like even our motives for trying to push the critical mass of people into the right directions are so confused and they are so... They are so caught up in the matrix of a prison. And we know about this famous sentence that I think comes from every famous man on earth at the same time. I heard it would be coming from Einstein. I don't know. It uh, doesn't matter. The matrix of the solution won't come from the matrix of the, that has crea created the problem in the very first place. 
Yes, and at the same time, we do not reflect deeply enough on how many layers of the matrix of the problem are still present and super alive and super awake and super powerful in our ideas and politics and laws around, um, around how we want to be part of the solution. So it won't come from us begging for a bigger prison, but from us getting an instinctive embodied taste of freedom, making us so hungry for the freedom inside that we will stop repairing just ourselves and from repairing myself in a microcosmic way, it will jump into the macrocosm at the same time because I am taking action and not taking action in terms of sacrificing my, my nights of sleep in order to help only others, but me, me living up to expressing, a, being, a, being a powerful living expression of love in action, which can't separate between self-love and being egoistic in the short term and being egoistic in the long vision which is, this is about paradise for all of us. So it's not a current small or current big crisis around climate or whatever we talk about in terms of crisis. This is the big game of life and death. And it's always present. There is no superficial stuff. There is no modern stuff. It's always about the whole thing. It's always about the absolute being present and being visible and being sensible and tactile for our senses, for our instincts in every moment. There is no microcosm that is small. Every microcosm screams at you with being with the aware, awareness around the universe. So, yeah, which comes down to our collapse and our confusion and our suffering is an illusion. However, I'm not busy with our suffering being an illusion because it is an illusion. I'm being, I'm being present with our suffering is suffering, if it exists or not. I don't want another collapsed spiritual guru in my life who says, oh, it's an illusion. If it doesn't lead to me, suffer less from my illusion. And if my illusion keeps creating suffering, for me or for anybody or anything around. It's my fucking duty to take it serious as if it would exist until it stopped existing. And that is where our spiritual scene will awaken to the power and the balls and the stamina and the rage and just, instead of just resting in cheap superficial wisdom. Yeah, in that way, our stupidity, choosing stupidity, may be way more intelligent instead of us choosing to say the right thing. Our truth is so much less true than our shadow and what we deny. So it won't work by us figuring out the truth and holding on to it. It won't work by us um, putting together the missing pieces of information. It's like at the moment, the narrative of people is always like, oh, and then this scandal comes up and then everybody awakens. Oh, then this, uh, these, uh, like, I don't know, sheets of, of paper or papers from, from, I don't know, secret services are, uh, are being put out into the internet by whistleblowers and then everybody will change everything because then they know. And it's not about what people know, it's about what people can afford to move and to change in terms of contain containment in their nervous system, which comes down to the individual and even more to the global and collective layer of uh, level of trauma, because trauma is the limiting uh, factor in terms of what a nervous system can contain as intensity and as change in a short time. Mm. In other words, putting that into a radical term, 
Change will not come from words and information. It will come from energy. And you might now say, no, Ilan, you are providing here information and I'm not. I'm sitting here just for my own nervous system, moving and digesting layers of energy. Because what I'm talking about here is something that's present in me to some extent. It has been present in me for my whole life and it has been becoming increasingly something like pressing me into expression as another layer of moving this energy inside. And the information in the video is a byproduct. And I'm not of service for anything. I try to not be of service for anything around at the moment more than for my own individual process, process of digestion and living up to, to more of who I am. Um, because this energy of talking about saving the world wants to move in me as energy. So if, if a shift comes, it won't come from information because we have enough information. We have seen enough scandals. We have, we, we had enough bad news. We know enough about children who are beaten up in order to know everything, like just just the first bad news on earth about the first dog being hit by somebody who owns this dog would have been enough for all of us if we wouldn't be stuck in numbness and collapse and being a coward and being resigned. It would have been enough in order to know something is going wrong. Something is deeply going wrong. A dog has been hit. Yes, last night. Did you hear that? Didn't you feel that? Then the more we will get to know, we will reveal around horrific things coming up and going on amongst humans and with other living beings. The more we will keep shutting down, the more we will know about the bad news, the more we will know about the scandals, the less we will be able to believe in our inner capacity to quote unquote save the world. And the most tragic thing is, it's not us believing in our capacity for changing the world. It's us embodying the knowledge that we want to save the world. We want to be part of this global regulation because our own inner, inner individual nervous system doesn't want anything else but regulate from trauma. If it comes from your individual life or the life of your parents or your species or whatever. So, and, and then it's, there is this other narrative that's just so stupid around, um, If I step into trying to be a part of this global uh, regulation or, or saving, like self-saving dynamics, and it doesn't work, then I sacrificed my whole life and it didn't work in the end. It wasn't enough. So there is no such thing like a future that proves to us that something that we took action about right now, today with our embodied instincts would have been not enough because we are not doing something out of our instincts for tomorrow. We do everything for the very present moment. If you live up to your full potential for the here and now, you do not forget about the future and you do not, you do not focus on the future. You are just creating automatically the most bliss, blissful future for all of us and for yourself in the very first place. But that's not differentiable. Uh, that's not a difference from the best future that, cre that you create for me. And that is again, like now our mind goes like blah, blah, but opinion, but egoism, but conflict, but whatever. That's the path of information. We have no idea about the path of energy and it will come from the path of energy. The change that we need on the global level will come from the path of energy instead of the path of words. And whatever we do in terms of sharing words, may it move your energy 
May it move energy in the space. May it move energy in your audience. If it doesn't shift energy, it was just another, maybe a little bit more pretty or educated way of wasting lifetime. Okay. Um, I want to describe a little bit more practically how I see the path of energy working. First of all, I said, um, it won't work by us moving the critical mass of number of people. It will be working if it works at all, which is an open question at the moment, um, by us moving the critical mass of energy. Why is that a different thing? Because if we count people, we kind of call, uh, count the individual uh, the individual um, amounts or contributions of consciousness and awareness and like conscious willpower and that is a nutshell on the ocean of energy that is present in all of us and that is present i could say around or independently from the individual persons so that th these are good news because we might figure out a way in the future or might have already figured out a way how to tap into the relevant resources or relevant masses of energy without having to say hey all my followers keep keep um yeah believing what i believe in etc so this is a good thing because it allows us to uh to Mm, to be in an unconditioned way promoting freedom for all of us like you may go your path and it might be completely a different god and a different direction than my path however your path is not a danger because by you choosing your path instead of my one my one isn't in danger in terms of oh then not enough people are following me so that's a good thing mm. And what we know, and that's something that I shared in the very first video of the series, uh, what we know from trauma research is everything that is in a collapse, in numbness, in fatigue, in emptiness, in the so-called seemingly nothingness, is there are the superpowers. To be honest, I think that's a very beautiful uh, parallel that we see in quantum physics, like the nothing is the state of the highest energy instead of the, the lack of energy. It's almost like matter or form is a symptom of a lack of energy instead of us being there in a condensed energy form. It's, it's rather like us, us being weakened <laughs> where we are from or where we have uh, yeah, boundaries or, or any, any sense of skin. Mm. So it is us getting a taste of the amount of energy of dark matter that is in in myself present because i am traumatized because i am collapsed or traumatized slash collapsed if i sense my inner non-sensation if i embody my disembodiment in a new way and again i won't go into detail here because um with the wording that i choose here um i think it's too abstract in order to really uh, harm in terms of oh fuck, this works and i don't know how to stop the train so but it, if if it is us opening our eyes for our inner hiddenness and collapse and in that way, invis invisibility, then we get a taste of the density and forces, the cosmic forces, the global impact and the global ocean of energy underneath the, the nutshells of our conscious willpower, personal stuff, neocortex, rational thinking, cultural conditioning, etc. And that is where we have to em embed ourselves or where we have to base ourselves in. So it basically is for everybody being, being interested in global regulation. It is give up the illusion of being a person, of being an individual and not in terms of, oh, I'm sitting down and meditating on it. And so I say, yes, that sounds true. It is you embodying that, which is whole another thing. 
it's whole another thing. It's a thing of rewiring your nervous system with hard workout every day for years, at least for years. And workout is not a workout. It's an energetic, mm, conscious, purposeful, disciplined visit in those realms that are always the realms of the outlaws, the insanity, the death, the danger, the trauma, the wounding, the feeling that you don't want to feel. Everything that's damaged, everything that's inofficial, everything that is hidden in the shadows of our collective, that's something that you will have to meet there and kind of uh, and that is why I think the path of energy is a tantric thing. It's a tantric path. It's kind of you have to make love with your shadows first. It's like you have to run into the disruption of your functioning, of your getting along. It's, it's me looking for a good life where everything is under control. It's just, that's, that's just the nicest corner of, of a horrific prison. So it's, and our instincts know that. Our instincts know a prison is a prison. There are no instincts going for short visioned egoism. Like instincts take your hand and lead you towards your death, towards your trauma, because they do not want you to suffer from that by dissociating from that. They want you to go through. And at the moment, we are just going into the trauma and then we get stuck. So that is why going into, into collapsed fields and not collapsing, facing the collapse is the masterpiece or the mastery that, uh, that I'm interested in. And that I think is the most useful skill for the upcoming years, because uh, we can be talking about trauma therapy and trauma healing and therapy and all of that and healing stuff in terms of therapy. But then it's more and more in an increasing way over the course of the next years, such a privileged island. I mean, then everybody is allowed to heal at least a little bit from their own childhood. Who can afford a therapist? Who can afford a therapist? Who can afford a therapist at the moment? It's less than one, one or two percent of all people in mankind at the moment. And times will become tougher. I'm not interested in our current narrative around, oh, this is a very hard time. It has always been hard and it has always been harder than we experienced that we could have, that we can handle because that is why we kept collapsing when we are confronted with the outer world. So our upcoming years will be, will be super tough. And I'm not interested in being in that way unresponsible that I say, hey, just jump into your shadow. And this is precisely how you're doing that. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to be the one saying, oh, this has to be a very safe setting. There are no safe settings around that are not increasingly expensive, increasingly rare and increasingly privileged. Yeah, so I believe in therapeutic principles, but they have to be adapted to the mass of energy and the mass of people if the mass of people is interested in that. Um, there's just no other way of making use of those wise and powerful principles in a way that is um, at the same time responsible for our showing up for we are aware of the mass of people who are suffering. So it's not coming from information, it's coming from energy. If I learn in my individual nervous system to tap into my inner collapse and sensing that my inner collapse is brimming with energy instead of just collapsed and dead and, and nothing and boring and something that I oversee or overlook. I again do not know which, work, which word is the right one at the moment. However, um, if I tap into the inner taste of brimming cosmic healing, changing, transformative death and life forces, shamanic initiating forces in my collapse, I get a taste of that being present in the collective around as well. And I get a taste of how to repeat my individual healing curve in the collective as well. That is why nobody can help saving the world who isn't, who cannot save himself or herself, or who, who cannot save, who cannot save himself or herself 
for example, if he or she takes action for the globe because he or she thinks I'm a sinner and I have to sacrifice something of my privileges so that others at least do not starve today, but maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Woohoo! Um, that is me believing in myself being a walking problem and a walking sinner. And that is me not being able to love myself, not being able to be aware of who I am inside. And that is why I, at the end of the game, will only have added another and maybe a little bit nicer layer of confusion to the whole mess. So that is why it is a challenge, because we are at the moment definitely destroying this planet. And at the same time, it's strictly forbidden for all of us to believe in humans are a problem. They, they produce problems for themselves and every other living being and this planet around. Yes. And they are not a problem. They are desperately trying providing the true solution and they are stuck due to confusion, due to trauma, due to collapse in their nervous system, which is something that they have inherited over the course of the last thousands of years. So that's the thing we have to get clear about. And it's not about, okay, so I'm good, I'm a walking present. Are you a walking present? Is your energy, is your existence enriching this planet? Is Mother Earth delighted? every time you take a step on her. Is she doing that? The only question is, are you aware of that? That is what I mean, what I mean with embodiment. Is the air that you breathe, that you inhale right now, delighted by you inhaling it? Yes or no? I don't want another cheap layer of us being spiritual freaks saying, oh, yay, I'm a walking contribution to this planet. And all of us beating ourselves still up for what? For our cellulite? For our makeup? For how that we, how we lost control in our last fight with our girlfriend? We have to choose. Are you in the big game? Then challenge the thing that you still believe in you being a problem instead of nodding to something intelligent in a stupid way, or me. Really self-dignity, self-responsibility for your self-love, that's a super hard workout. And I have never ever met somebody who is truly living up to this art. But everybody nods, because I'm surrounding myself with intelligent people. That's worth nothing. Our intelligence is the most way of staying, it's the most efficient way of staying stupid when it comes to uh, efficiency. So it is basically us adding, and by that for the, for the course of the next years, overemphasizing the path of energy. And the path of energy is I travel into my collapse and I travel back from my collapse. Like I, I experience my collapse without collapsing. I could say I experience suffering without suffering from the suffering. It's a very paradox intervention. It is me dying my death without dying. It is me allowing my so-called negative emotions and welcoming them with open arms instead of fighting them in that moment. And what I see then is something like the individual, your individual healing of your individual trauma can be translated to the collective nervous system. Because to be honest, I do not experience mankind as anything else, but as a collective nervous system. So to me, like everything is a nervous system. If you know your nervous system, if you know the trauma landscape of your own individual nervous system, you, you, you know how the whole thing is wired. There is no difference. It's just a, it's not even a translation. It's just seeing the same thing there as well. And then what I see is, and I also talked about that, I think in at least one more video, but it's still abstract. I see something like us. Mm, I see my working term. My working terms are, there are, if people are interested in that, there are dancers on the bridge. 
and they are doing something like alone or with others in many different formats that are possible they are doing something like shaking events so my working terms for the moment are shaking events and dancers on the bridge just for you to know these are terms that i'm making up in order to navigate in in language as long as it's kind of let's say needed or in the field navigating in words at all um and shaking events are something that I consider to be even more effective and sustainable than what several spiritual teachers, I think, at the moment are doing that. They are doing something like group meditations that are um, focused in the mind of the people um, on, on a certain topic, like, or example, for example, prayers for, of course, uh, like... Um, areas or, or countries who are suffering from a catastrophe or something like that. I think shaking events are more effective and even more sustainable than those meditative processes, processes, because they tap into the path of energy instead of the path of the mind, which is still, I, I think the, the resources of the mind, even though we do not tap into the true potential of the human mind at the moment, um, it's, it's still something that we know better than the potential of free flow of energy, because free flow of energy is something that's then immediately uh, blocked by our discontainment for energy moving through our nervous systems. That is why I think us training embodiment like crazy, embodying intensity and in like ecstasy and deep down regulation, tolerating down regulation, tolerating true relaxation without collapsing, all of those um, training soft skills in our nervous system then being fed into the collective nervous system that's that's gold, that's medicine. Mm. So shaking events are like group meditation processes being dedicated towards a certain topic of suffering that's present anywhere on earth and by using the path of energy by being a whole body shaking organism i would say every person who's then standing there and shaking is a vibrating acupuncture needle for the collective field and by consciously connecting to a field of suffering or trauma or collapse which is all the same uh, we can we can reconnect the collapsed field with the information of how to vibrate. So that's that's something I think is very powerful. And I will show a diagram about that in a moment. The other thing that is powerful around shaking events is that it provides us with a embodied experience instead of just our blah, blah mind that we are connected with everything around and that we in that way consciously choose to connect with everything around and that in itself is such a such a powerful thing at the moment so much around dance and embodiment and body work is is about oh that's just for me and that's for my body and that's for my feeling myself and it's super interesting and timely to define our bodies as the very first thing that is handed over which is by the way i mean it is handed over <laughs> our bodies are are solidly sold to every layer of capitalism. Um, so what I call the most being me, myself, and just me is the least me being myself. But that's a footnote. There's one more thing that I wanted to mention, and it's not on my mind at the moment. However, okay, I will go into the diagram that I... Uh, that I drew and I hope you can read it. So um, we have a certain topic, let's say child abuse. And we have dancers on the bridge. Oh, now I realize what I wanted to mention before. We have the dancers on the bridge and they are the solution because they are dance, they know from their individual learning curve and that is maybe that they have been abused as a child, by the way. So that's not always happening to the others, <laughs> not at all. Um, by dancing back and forth, they are bringing the energy. It's like they are going with the, with the, in their individual nervous system is present the information of self-healing of the system. And this information 
is something as their courage or their intention or their resource. And they start traveling on the bridge to the topic of trauma voluntarily. They do not have to be interested in child abuse if it's not messing their own individual life up at the moment, however they choose to do that. Why so ever? Maybe because love is a resilient thing in us humans. So we are connecting with our whole body vibration to this topic. And it's almost like us bringing vibrational energy in a, in a cup <laughs> into this collapsed field. And then in the collapsed field, we can face that tight in a titrated way. We can face that step by step and take a little bit of this brimming collapsed energy and dance all the way back over the bridge into the topic, into the real, like handing it over into the dynamics of self-healing. So handing it over means the dancer somewhere here and somewhere here, initiation to death. This is what I've written here. The initiation to death is like the dancer is handed over himself or herself. It's not, oh, I'm saving the world. It's, oh, I'm killed on the way. And that is why I think us being okay with global extinction makes it less likely that we get globally extincted by the consequences of our actions and non-actions. But um, it, because because it's like, like in Elizabeth Kübler-Ross, um, like research around dying people, it's like there is a deep, deep peace. There is a deep okayness with death becoming, uh, getting closer and being our own death, also our personal death. And being in so much peace with death might lead to miracle healing. So again, I think this is a big game and there might be a global miracle healing. But us hoping, okay, I'm okay with my death, so miracle peace. Healing, can you please come now because I'm still afraid in a collapsed way that won't work. So that is why this is the, this is the whole game. And it's not easy because everything easy is already done. So this, it will challenge you because otherwise you're just missing what I'm talking about. And it challenges me literally to death. That is what I'm talking about. I'm not somewhere else, but I am deeply aware of this challenge is a challenge, period. Nobody here is a heroine, nobody here is a hero. We are all dancers on the bridge. And that's interesting in the solution that is free, uh, freed from the matrix of the problem is stopping believing in the solution is just here. That's still a polarized world. That's still a world of separation. You are adding something to the problem. We are adding something to the solution. These are t still two instead of one, like instead of embodied non-duality. So the dancer on the bridge is the solution. The freedom on the way is the solution. It's not about us preventing trauma. It's not about us running from trauma. It's not about us healing trauma. It's about us staying free no matter how many wounds are on our path. That is dancing back and forth, dancing back and forth. The freedom bit of choice, of pendulation between collapse and freedom, between bliss and suffering. That is the matrix of solution beyond needing a solution. We are not needing a solution. We are not needing anything. And by the way, it's not a taboo that we might fail and that would also be okay. I can talk more about how the dancer on the bridge will need to be initiated into death. I see, to be honest, I see, I see for those fields of death that are around the fields of collapse, the experiences of death, I think they're a whole, let's say, global modern job description or global modern new profession should come up over the course of the next years. And that's something like, like death shamans who know about the path and uh, who transfer also to the political and the global uh, awareness of how deeply we are messed up, how deeply this trauma has us in its hand, 
day and night and day and night and just all of us. I think it's it's very important that we uh, start using those and maybe also offering those resources that come from shamanism and mysticism and and yeah dying people outlaws um people who are living their existence in shadowy parts becoming deeply familiar with um with those ones who could not afford entertaining themselves in the so-called superficial layers of getting along we need those people as our teachers yeah uh, so one more thing um it's just something that i want to uh, have have been put into this video as well and then on that more um and that's a little bit more about the dancer on the bridges uh, individual individual process because it's somehow like sacrificing being an individual because it has never been one but that's another story and first of all it steps from the individual into the collective and it does that by conscious choice choice and then the dancer on the bridge it he or she she or he um she or he surrenders without collapse to being handed over to the process like life force moving in me instincts moving in me my instincts are moving me into the trauma collapse x that is where i wanted to uh, how i wanted to dedicate my shaking or my shaking event to and then all of that with this charge of my own courage and my own trauma stuff uh, gets a kind of automatic healing curve, self-healing curve into the topic that is here, is self-healing itself here. And it puts the dancer on the bridge in a way bigger, more uplifted and more open and more powerful, uh, like a more, a, a freer version of herself or himself than how we have started. And that is why doing this, like sacrificing my personality, sacrificing my individual stuff, dying without dying for something that's seemingly not so much in my personal suffering landscape is the most egoistic and most contributing thing that I can choose to do with my lifetime. I mean, yeah. If we wouldn't have come that far in terms of collective trauma and cultural messiness, the best thing that we would do with our lifetime is just loving each other, loving existence to death, being blissed out with gratitude and joy, and knowing deeply how much we are wanted and loved and wonderful. But the second best thing is left for this era, which is deeply messed up in the first place. And that is in my current research, a few terms and a few working uh, thesis that I am busy with at the moment are those ones that I have shared in those uh, three videos until now. And um, yeah, so that's my, my take on that, seemingly about information, but more about me moving energy in terms of words, which is basically at the end of the day, again the same, one and the same.